Hey guys, welcome back to Ashley's Homestead Adventures. We are in the garden today. Uh, it is just afternoon and it is super duper hot. Um, we are, I think we're at like 95 degrees. So basically what I'm gonna do is I need to go through and, and just continue on my harvesting. Um, so I am going to go through and just do some harvesting and uh, some pulling out of plants and you know I'm just making my way around the garden trying to get caught up from being gone on vacation for two weeks. I'm still working at it uh, and I mean it's just the July garden you guys. Um, it's the July garden is a hot mess. It's it's beautiful in all of its messiness, uh, but there's things that need to be ripped out. I'm dealing with some bug damage uh, and there's a ton of harvest in here. So let's get at it and see what we can pull out of this bad boy. I need to grab my wheelbarrow. So I had to uh, move the table out here because the garden has taken had taken over the table. So move the table out here. Um, and as you can see, the garden has taken over. Um, we have right here, uh, we have this melon and I do believe this melon's gonna come off today. I'm gonna harvest it today. You wanna look for the tendril on the back side of the melon to be completely dead. And this is not completely dead, but it's got that cracking there. I'm worried it's gonna fall and break. So, and I'm just, I'm impatient. So I'm gonna harvest it today. Uh, and we have, so this is my winter squash, one of my winter squashes. Um, and I can still pierce skin with my fingernails, so they're not ready yet. Um, I have more down there. And those are the, oh, I want to say Odessa. Yep, Odessa squash from uh, Baker Creek Seeds. Uh, got, you know, more melons coming. We've got green beans. We've got rampicantes. I've got um, yellow straight necks. I've got acorns in here with a massive load of squash bugs. Um, I will treat the garden this evening again. I've been treating almost every day. Look at my little wee corns. Look at them. Aren't they cute? Oh, they're so cute. I'm so excited about them. Um, these are the Chires baby corns. I'm so excited about these. Uh, so I've got some, I've got some zucchinis in here I need to harvest. I'm leaving the mustard greens to till they get to a certain point. They've got to get to where the um, the holes are starting to pop, and then I can trim them and take them inside. Uh, I've got um, beans that I'm letting dry on the plants, but I need to clean the plants up, get some air in here, uh, and. Just squash, squash, and more squash, you guys. I'm overloaded with squash, but it is the season of abundance. And I'm not gonna starve this summer. So I'm cool. All right, let's get to work.
the uh, Reno F1 egg font. Look at all those. They're everywhere. And with your winter squash, the trick that I have learned to know when you can harvest your winter squash is when you cannot pierce the skin with your fingernail. So that's what I'm doing. I'm going to get these, the ones that are ready, harvested. Try to continuously take those out. This is yellow fin. There it is, all spread out on the wash table. Uh, the acorns, I will just leave them alone um, and I will just put them in storage uh, for, you know, this winter or when I want to eat them. Um, these guys, I will, this is all for like fresh eating. Um, and I am today going to do uh, preserve and freeze zucchini rings for frying. So probably these small guys will go into that. Green beans fresh. These will go on the table um, and wait for the next time that I do shredded zucchini. Um, that's really all that's left to do with this is to shred it. Um, unless you guys have some ideas. And I don't know what I'm gonna do with these overgrown patty pan squash. I like to eat them when they're small and tender, and these are, at this stage, winter squash. And I don't know, other than decoration, I don't know what to use them. So, if you have any ideas, I'm more than happy to hear them. I'm gonna get these washed off and in the house, and we're headed to the kitchen where it's cooler. Okay, so after some uh, ice water and a cold shower and cooling off a little bit, we are back in the kitchen. Uh, and today's kitchen task is, uh, this is the chicken stock that I canned last week. It needs, or that I made last week. And I just got done skimming off uh, the fat off of the top. Uh, there wasn't much, but there was just a little bit, and this is how I do it. Just with a spoon, I mean, it's nothing fancy. And so we are going to pressure can this. Um, but we have to heat it up first. So we'll have to heat that up, bring it up to a boil again. Um, the pressure canner is heating up. The jars are in the dishwasher. And then we have, we're going to make all of these into rings and freeze them in rings um, or discs uh, and 
these will be uh, frozen for frying um, so that we have, you know, zucchini that we can just pop out of the freezer and fry it. I did hear uh, that it that it works great. Uh, so I'm gonna give it a try. Uh, and then we have all these kohlrabis and these kohlrabis, the big ones, I'm just going to, I'm probably going to just dice them all up and uh, blanch them and they will go in the freezer. So I'll just cut them in cubes and they will go in the freezer. Uh, so that is what we have to get processed today. So let's get started. I've got the chicken stock in a big pot heating up and our canner is warmed up. I'm just keeping it, trying to keep it just below a boil. I just turned it down. Um, I've got my grabbers here and my measuring um, device here, my funnel, my canning funnel, and my distilled vinegar here ready to wipe jars. Chocolate morsels are rough housing in the living room. Here is our current zucchini straight neck and patty pan position. Oh, and acorn. These are easy, these are easy peasy. Um, and really, I mean, it is a lot of work, but that's easy peasy too. I run them through the Cuisinart, you know, I just skin them, take the seeds out, and they go through the Cuisinart and get shredded. Um, I don't know. I don't know if I'm gonna try to dice these and put them in the freezer for like squash casseroles, or if I'm just gonna let them cure because they're all hard. Um, I'm just using this decoration. Set them on the porch. I don't know. I gotta look that up, but that's not today's task. So one day at a time around here, guys. That's really all I can, I can cope with is one day at a time around here. The burden of abundance is a beautiful, wonderful thing. Uh, but if I get too caught up in worrying about, you know, what I'm gonna do with things that I have set aside because they can be set aside and it's not like an immediate has to do when I have other things that need to be done, I'll drive myself crazy. So if you are in the season of abundance, give yourself grace and take one day at a time. It's going to be okay. Um, I do want to try this um, before I, and wardrobe change, you guys, I took a shower, sorry. Um, before I put it in jars, make sure that it's worthy. And this is the chicken stock that I made from um, our roosters here on our farm uh, that I butchered. Ooh. Yes. Mm. I would have gotten a bigger spoonful. Um, very good, you guys. If you guys are are raising your own uh, ch chickens, um, and even even if you're not raising your own chickens, um, and you find a you know a sale for whole chickens at. Um, at the store, or if you're, you know, if you're in a season of of waiting for your farm, and you know, you don't you don't have the land, so you don't have the chickens. Um, you, there's a lot of things that you can be doing uh, to learn how to utilize everything that comes off your farm when you when you get your farm. 
Um, and waste not, want not is one of my big mottos. I try, I'm really, really uh, passionate about not wasting food. And uh, so making homemade chicken stock is just one way and it's one thing that you guys can practice. You can can. Um, you can buy cheap chickens at the grocery store, you know, when they go on sale. Uh, buy three or four of them and make, you know, make chicken soup and can it. Or, um, you know, make, make bone broth. Practice making bone broth. Bone broth has a ton of very, very good properties to it and it's not hard to make, you guys. You just put the bones in the crock pot and you let them cook for 48 hours. Um, and I added some herbs from the garden and some onions from the garden into this and it's absolutely delicious. It will be uh, a very a very good thing to have on our shelves in the winter time. Um, also, I have a couple things that I have not tried with you that I made that I know you guys are wondering about. So, the first one is the refrigerator pickles um, that I did. And the second one is the, this is the zucchini relish that I canned. So, Crunchy. That's the first thing. Mm. Almost, but not quite. Um, these called for, I think it was a tablespoon of dill per jar. And I thought, whoa, that's a lot of dill, but it's good. Delicious. Um, and it's basically just dill that I put in the jars and uh, one clove of garlic in each jar. And then I made up my brine with vinegar, sugar, and water. And that's it. Cut up my pickles, stuffed my jars, poured the brine over, um, and closed the jars up. And this is... These are fabulous. Mm -hmm. mm. It's one thing I really don't like about canning pickles um, is it's just so hard. You don't ever know from year to year if they're going to come out crunchy or not. Um, let me pop the top here. Nice seal on that. And... I like the texture as far as what it, you know it's coming out of the jar like. Mm. Mm. Wow. Again, I love the crunch. It gives you that real fresh aspect of a what a relish is supposed to taste like. Um, and I love well, the relish. I have to get a new fork every time because it's a condiment and I, the pickles, nobody else is going to eat those, but, um, so I'm going to have to get another fork because I want another bite. <laughs> uh, it is like bread and butter pickles. It's more on the sweet side. Um, so it's more like sweet relish, but I love the crunch. I actually, I didn't think I was going to like the shred and I do like the shred. Um, it just adds more texture. It's not slimy at all. Um, I was also concerned about the amount of turmeric used and these are, it, it's got just the perfect amount. Um, 
perfect acidity to the sweetness. Mm. That's the bomb. There are bratwursts in my future. Man, I mean, you could put that on a hamburger, you could put it on bratwurst, you, you could put it on a salad. Um, Wow. No taste of zucchini whatsoever. Uh, very, very good. Try zucchini relish, you guys, and dill refrigerator pickles. Try them. You won't be upset. Promise. One inch head space and just finger tight. All right. Okay, and today I'm using uh, a brand new Presto canner. Um, and this is a, it's a 16 quart, uh, so it holds seven quarts. Um, and we are going to wait for this to start venting through this hole here, and then we'll let it vent or exhaust for 10 minutes, and then we'll go ahead and we'll put the weight on here, and it'll just plop on there, and then we'll wait for it to get up to 11 pounds pressure and I, due to my elevation, uh, I need to pressure can 11 pounds for 30 minutes, four quarts. It would be 25 minutes for pints, but it's 30 minutes, four quarts. So. Okay, we are venting. down. Now it's just watching this gauge and I'll be watching it. It needs to go to there. The 11. And then it needs to stay there. In the meantime, zucchini, scale, cutting board, chicken bucket, That's what I'm doing. Made it to 11. So. Thirty minutes. Alright. Timer off. Heat off from our canner. And we wait for it to go down to zero pressure. Meanwhile, I've got um, water coming to a boil here. My Ziploc bags are out. Uh, an ice bath here. And I've got kohlrabi cut up here. Um, that's all I have left. We're making good time. Okay, we are at zero. 
So I'm going to pull this off and set my timer for 10 minutes. And my timer just went off for my kohlrabi. It's being blanched. So I'm going to rotate this. The hot will go into cold. The cold will go into drain. Okay. Our 10 minutes is up. So I'm going to go ahead and open up the can. I need two hands. Well, now we will let these guys sit in here for another um, 10 minutes. Some people do 15, 10 to 15, just to let them cool down a wee bit. Um, and then we'll take them out. They look good. They look really good. Ooh, I'm so excited. Okay. They are coming out. Music to my ears. Mm. All right, there we are. Four quarts chicken broth canned. And we ended up with three one and a half pound bags of kohlrabi and four one and a half pound bags of uh, zucchini rings for uh, taking out of the freezer and frying in the dead of winter. So we can have fried zucchini, which will be a treat. Um, we don't do a lot of fried foods, but We've also never had a garden like this, so it'll be fun to be able to pull out something like this um, and maybe some catfish in the dead of winter and have a little bit of a fry and uh, spoil ourselves every once in a while. So lots of food um, going into storage today. I'm excited. And now it is time to go out and bring the kids in from their pasture. So I am going to bid you guys farewell. I appreciate you coming along on this kitchen journey, garden journey with me today. Uh, while we got some things preserved and put up for the winter. And I hope that I inspired you to do the same. I hope you had a beautiful day. I'll see you on the next one. Yours truly. <laughs>